Hey crew, Rocco here. Today we're going to be having a look from FTD Facts. Coke Studio! Now I've got no idea what Coke Studio is about. I'm guessing that it's somewhere where all the greatest minds in the soft drink world get together and they all, it's like a laboratory, you know, and they mix like different things in. They go, what about Raspberry Coke? It could be a whole heap of people that just sit down and bag up cocaine. It could be that Coke sponsors a musical program and there's musical acts on it. I don't know, but that's what we're here for. Coke me up, Johnny. Oh, it's the musical one. Studio definitely has brought some of the best musical talents together on one single platform. And if you've seen any of the performances, more often than not, the collaborations are just pure musical magic. Coke Studios Pakistan began back in 2008, Pakistan. and it's had a new season every single year since then. Pakistan. Right now, it's in its 10th season, so Whoa. we gotta take a look at some facts. How's it going, everybody? My name is Leroy Kenton. Welcome to another episode of FTD Facts, and uh, I'm gonna put on some more clothes. Sorry, I was just trying to show off the results of me working out and hitting the gym. But yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Okay, I think we're good now. But before we get into Should've the facts, just left guys, it off, man. Go with music, it. Hit that like button on this video. The concept for the show was created in 2007 by the Coca-Cola Company. The show features music artists that are already established as well as up-and-coming artists, and it's the longest-running annual TV show in Pakistan Shit. since 2008. The show's concept was then adopted by Rohail Hyatt. He was from the band Vital Signs. This is a music video from the 80s from Pakistan. What's going on here? Is that what I'm looking at here? This is Pakistan in the 80s. Wow, he's got like a. The show was who does he also look like? By him, along with his wife, Umber Hayat, as well as other band members, Shahzad Hassan and Rizwan Ul Haq. And yeah, from there, it was an immediate success. Everybody wanted immediate. some more of this. It started to be frequently broadcasted on numerous television stations, as well as radio stations in Pakistan. Now, when you watch any of the performances, like everything is so well choreographed and the audio sounds amazing, and that's all done live in real time. <laughs> It's not all cut up and super edited like these FTD facts episodes. So basically, it's like a live act, is what uh, Leo is trying to say here is that they sound really good and it's like a band that plays live that sounds good. Episodes. I'm telling you man like if we had no editors these videos would be like 40 minutes long with all the mistakes I make Especially trying to pronounce some of those names out there. I can so, feel yeah, his pain. I mentioned that yeah This is done all in real time So like the artists as well as the sound technicians and the cameramen all have to be on point in the year 2016 Coke Music Pakistan had 192 members. Yeah, their team consists of artists producers sound technicians They have an in-house band as well as other supporting staff so the whole coke studio team is like just one big family and in the hand has an important part to play and again of course they do produce an amazing show so everybody has to be on their best game and they show that time and time again concept of Coke Studio is to bring traditional South Asian music, which is played with traditional instruments like flutes and stuff like that, and mix that with more modern music that uses like electric guitars yeah. and synthesizers. And the results are always amazing. In season nine alone, they use a total of 36 different instruments. It's got the old harpsichord, is it? Accordion. Okay, so now this next fact is a bit of a throwback. You gamers out there may appreciate this one a lot. If you're too young to remember, no, the gaming company Atari one. was launched back in 1972. Games definitely came a long way from there. That's sick! Star Wars, yo! Yeah, I remember these. 
I mean, I was way too young but for between this. Between the years 2004 and 2011, Atari released what was called Atari Flashback, which allowed people to play classic Atari games. So this has HDMI, can play 720p, not that Atari games are high resolution, no. <laughs> but you can connect it to your TV more easily. And that's what the staff does a lot in their free time. And it's pretty ironic because it actually sort of matches with the theme of the show, you know, to mix the old with the new. In a country as diverse as well Pakistan, where people speak many different languages and dialects, artists from different provinces in Pakistan perform songs that represent where they come from and in the language of their people. So in saying that, if you're not familiar with the show, you could just imagine how diverse the music production is. Experience the spectrum of our music directors. On the Coke Studio platform, more than 57 bands and artists have performed. And some of these people have appeared more than once on the show. The first season had a live audience that witnessed performances from bands and artists such as Rahat Fateh Ali Khan, Strings, and Ali Zafar, amongst many others. As well as they had musicians such as Bohemia, Atif Aslam, Komal Rizvi, and they also performed in subsequent seasons. Whenever I hear them, but it's sounding good to me. Now, it's really hard to be the competition when all the performances are just world-class talent. But there's always someone that ends up on top, and that person is Atif Aslam. His song, Tajdar e Haram, that song has just under 90 million total views at the time of Whoa! filming this video, making it the most watched video in all of Coke Studios library. I think it's because he's a bit of a looker too, you know, he's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it's personally not my taste, but, you know, you can tell. The other guys they showed was like, yeah, beards and shit. Seen as sworn enemies. For the most part, artists have always treated each other with respect. And it's not any different See, in this case, where no a number of Indian talents well, was. have said to say that they love the Pakistani version of Coke Studio. It's just another example of how far art can travel and the bridges it can build. But not just that, Coke Studio has also become extremely popular around the world, having gathered over half a billion total views from its artists around the world. So, from the popularity of Coke Studio Pakistan, India launched its own version. It's all about playing together. It's all about finding your roots. It's all about Coke Studio your India. In the most simplest way and sharing it with the world. As well as a Middle Eastern version was launched. It's our English version. a little bit more about the worldwide effect of Coke Studios. It's watched in over 150 countries. Nice. What started as a television experiment in Pakistan has turned into a global phenomenon. People from all over the world have responded to Coke Studios and it continues to maintain its older charm, but now it can also relate to a younger generation. On the 10th anniversary of the show this year, 2017, the general manager of Coca-Cola Pakistan and Afghanistan, Rizwan Khan, he stated this, we have come a long way since we embarked on this challenging journey a decade ago. Looking back, we feel greatly humbled that Coke Studio has been able to achieve so much in terms of bringing virtually unknown or little known musicians into the national limelight, reintroducing music genres like Qawwali and Sufi music to the youth of Pakistan, continuing to stay true to the promise of producing quality fusion of music and practically playing an important role in reviving the music industry of Pakistan. I want to know how Coke got involved. And that concludes this episode on Coke Studio Pakistan. It's truly an amazing and entertaining show. I highly recommend watching it. And thank you guys Leroy. so much for that had requested. How did Coke video. get involved? This episode of FTD Facts was brought to you by Grammarly. Right. Now it's time for their plug. Grammarly, yeah, check it out. It's, it's definitely worthwhile. Grammarly, if you're listening, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, Having a sponsor? Guys, Coke, Coke, if you're listening, I wouldn't mind having a sponsor. How did Coke get involved in all this? And what, what's what's the deal here? Is that as one of the 10 facts, I think. But guys, yeah, it sounds like a good thing. I wouldn't mind checking out the other ones as well. Coke Studios Australia. Might have to open that shit up. Hit the like button for more Coke Studio videos. I don't think they'll really be doing any because they'll be copywriting us. 
But let me know what you think about Coke Studio. Do you like it? Is it cool? I don't know. It looks like a good idea. I wouldn't mind it in my language, you know, just to be totally racist. But apart from that, you know, the Pakistani and uh, Indian and Middle Eastern people are quite lucky to have Coke Studio. Coke's on board, guys. Can't be a bad thing if Coke's on board. All it does is rot your teeth, give kids high blood pressure, and you can drop a dirty nickel into it, bring it out clean. Imagine what it's doing to your guts. Guys, thank you very much for joining me for Coke Studios. 10 Incredible Facts and FTD. Be sure to check out FTD Facts for more cool videos on practically everything. Guys, thank you. We'll see you for the next one.